Hello everyone. Today we are solving at Excel International IGCSE 91 Chemistry Paper 1C November 2021. Question number 5 to question number 7 in our part 2 video. Guys, if you haven't seen the part 1 video, we'll have a link in the description. Question number 5. Two experiments are done to determine the percentage composition by a volume of a mixture of three gases, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and argon. In experiment one, a student bubbles the mixture of gases through lime water. Carbon dioxide reacts with lime water. The diagram shows the apparatus that the student uses. We have the syringe A, where we have a mixture of gases, and we have gas syringe in one cm cube divisions. And then we have the syringe B. In here, we have the lime water. The student pushes the mixture of gases out of the syringe A, but no gas bubbles appear on the lime water. Give one change that the student needs to make to the apparatus for the gas bubbles to appear in the lime water. So basically, the student must have this particular tube inserted into the lime water. In that way, there will be gas bubbles. So we'll, uh, the student must add more lime water to cover a uh, tube on left, and the glass tube on the uh, left should be longer so that it can reach the lime water. Part B, when the apparatus in experiment one is set up correctly, the mixture of gases is bubbled gently through the lime water so that all the carbon dioxide is removed. The volume of mixture of gases in syringe A at the start is 76 cm cube. The volume of gases in the syringe B at the end is 66 cm cube. Calculate the percentage by volume of carbon dioxide in the mixture of gases in syringe A. So we can see a total of 10 cm cube reduction. So volume of carbon dioxide, first of all. So in order to do percentage volume, percentage by volume, carbon dioxide, we'll have to do 10 divided by 76 into 100. So the answer comes 13.2%. Give the change in the appearance of the lime water. So whenever carbon dioxide is going to be bubbled through lime water, it will go cloudy. So the lime water turns from colorless to cloudy. Part three. Explain why the gas syringe in experiment one cannot be used to find the percentage of carbon dioxide in a typical sample of air. The question says, explain why gas syringe in experiment one cannot be used to find percentage carbon dioxide in a typical sample of air. The reason why we cannot find it because, uh, uh, you know, the percentage or the amount of carbon dioxide in the air is too small. So therefore, the reading all right, in the uh, syringe would be less than one cm cube, so which will be very hard to read. In experiment two, a teacher pushes the remaining gases over a hot copper powder. The diagram shows the apparatus the teacher uses. Copper powder, heat, gas syringe. The copper powder turns black as it reacts with oxygen. Argon is extremely unreactive, so it does not react with copper. Name the black substance that forms on copper powder. So basically when copper reacts with oxygen in the air, it tends to form copper two oxide. So, 
copper two oxide. And copper two oxide is black in color. Suggest why the teacher uses copper powder instead of the same mass of large piece of copper. Now, you know, copper powder gives a greater surface area than a large piece of copper. So it will allow faster reaction. Part three, explain why argon is extremely unreactive. So argon has its full outer shells of electron. All right, it belongs to group zero and basically it has a complete outer shell of electron. That's why it does not want to uh, lose or gain electron and which makes it very unreactive. Question number six. This question is about organic compounds. The diagram shows the displayed formula of five compounds, U, V, W, X, and Y. So the first compound, U. We can see U has five carbons in a row with a carbon-carbon double bond in between the second and the third carbon. The first carbon uh, is this one. So the second and the third carbon, we can see there is a carbon-carbon double bond. And there's a total of five carbon in total. So we can name it pent. Two in. Then we have uh, in V, we have four carbons in a circular uh, pattern. So that will be cyclo. Now it will be cyclobutane. After that, we have four carbons in a row. That means this is butane. We have four carbons in a row with a carbon carbon double bond between second and the third. So it will be but two in. Four carbons in a row with the OH, butan one all, or we can also call it butanol. Now the question says, give the letter of the compounds that is not a hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon by definition must only contain hydrogen and carbon atoms. Since butan one all does not contain, uh, you know, uh, only carbon and hydrogen, it also contains oxygen. So that's why uh, it will be, it will not be a hydrocarbon. So why? The next question says, give the letter of the compound that is unsaturated hydrocarbon with the empirical formula CH2. We can see it says saturated hydrocarbon. All right, saturated hydrocarbon, we can see saturated hydrocarbon must have a carbon-carbon single bond. But uh, so carbon-carbon single bond, we can only find in V and we can find in W. However, uh, it must have a general formula CH2 in Cyclobutane, we have C4H8, which will have an empirical formula of CH2. And in butane, we have C4H10. So thereby the empirical formula will be C2H5. So V is the answer. Part three, give the letter of the compound that reacts with bromine in the presence of ultraviolet radiation to form this structure. So basically when alkane reacts with when alkane reacts with bromine, it can produce bromobutane. It can produce bromobutane in ultraviolet radiation in free radical substitution. So the, our answer will be W. Part four, give the letter of the compound that forms an addition polymer with this repeating unit. All right, so we can see if we make the monomer, out of this, we will get a carbon-carbon double bond with the CH3, CH3, and the hydrogens. Thereby, we can conclude that this is but2-ene, and but2-ene is X. Next, give the displayed formula of an alkene that is an isomer of compound X. So alkene, which is isomer of compound X, will be four carbons in a row, but instead of putting the carbon carbon double bond in the middle, we'll put it in the left. So this gives us but one in. 
Compound U and X are members of the same homologous series. Members of the same homologous series have the same functional group. Give two other characteristics of compounds in the same homologous series. Members of the same homologous series always have the same general formula and they have similar chemical properties. Some bonus point, members in the same homologous series have trend in their physical properties and each consecutive members differ by CH2 group. Part B, compound Z contains 38.7% carbon, 9.7% hydrogen, and 51.6% oxygen by mass. Show by calculation the empirical formula of compound Z is CH3O. So the first thing that we're going to do is divide percentage by AR. The next thing, the next step is going to be the simplest ratio. To find out the simplest ratio, we'll divide by the smallest number that we obtain from all of these results. So 3.225 is the smallest. So we divide everyone by 3.225. Part two, the relative formula mass MR of the compound Z is 62. Deduce the molecular formula of compound Z. In order to do it, we'll first of all, we'll have to find out the MR of the empirical formula, CH3O, which is equal to 31. Then we'll have to divide the 62 with 31 and we'll get two. Then we will multiply. In order to find out the molecular formula, we're going to write molecular formula equals to CH3O multiplied by 2 C2H6O2. Question number seven. This question is about nitrogen and some of its compound. Nitrogen and oxygen do not react together at room temperature. At the high temperature in the car engine, nitrogen and oxygen react to form nitrogen monoxide. Give a chemical equation for this reaction. So nitrogen reacting with oxygen, both are diatomic molecules, so N2 plus O2, producing NO. To balance it out, we'll have to put it to. Give a reason why this reaction only occurs at high temperature. Because uh, we can definitely say, you know, nitrogen, nitrogen has triple bond. Definitely that requires a very high activation energy. State why it is important that oxides of nitrogen are not released into the atmosphere. Oxides of nitrogen can cause acid rain. And oxides of nitrogen, because it can form acidic uh, you know, as it, it can become acidic, so it can, you know, cause respiratory problems. So, part B, nitrogen monoxide gas can be removed from car exhaust fumes when it reacts with carbon monoxide gas. The rate of the reaction is increased by passing the gas over a catalyst. Explain why a catalyst increases the rate of a reaction. So basically, a catalyst can provide an alternative reaction route or reaction pathway, which can lower the activation energy. Part two, 
explain how increasing the pressure of gases increases the rate of reaction. So increasing pressure puts the molecules or the particles in the reactant molecules closer together. And therefore there are more collisions per unit time, which leads to faster reaction. Part C. Ammonia is a simple molecule with the formula NH3. Complete the diagram to show the outer shell electrons in ammonia. So in ammonia, we have nitrogen. So basically, this nitrogen will have five electrons in its outer shell. So we represent it with five dots and the hydrogen, five crosses. All right, hydrogen, each hydrogen is represented with a cross. Each hydrogen has one electron. So three crosses. Part two, the bonds in ammonia are covalent. Describe the forces of attraction in a covalent bond. So in a covalent bond, there is an electrostatic force of attraction between the nuclei and the shared pair of electron. So we'll always refer to the electrostatic attraction between the nuclei and the shared pair of electron as the covalent bond. Part three, explain why ammonia has a low boiling point. So basically ammonia molecules, you know, between one molecule and another molecule, the forces of attraction between the molecules are much, much weaker. And therefore it requires a very little amount of energy to overcome that particular force. Covalent bonds are stronger, but then intermolecular forces between one ammonia and another ammonia is very, very weak. So thereby, very little amount of energy is needed to overcome that particular force. Guys, thank you for joining the part two video. Uh, see you in the next video and subscribe to the channel and uh, click on the bell icon so that you get notified when the next video is uploaded. Bye-bye, see you in the next video.